Hello out there, and before we get started today, two quick notes. The first one is a shout out to my buddy Zach over at Zach Stuff for gifting me this excellent knife. Uh, really pumped to have it and just very grateful to have a friend like him in the community. So definitely uh, check him out, link to his channel down below. He's doing great stuff as always. Then also guys, I'm not sure if you saw the most recent video that I posted about the charity raffle for the late Nick Maffei, but in addition to that raffle, if you want to get involved in some other way to benefit his family, I do have channel stickers that are available for two and three dollars and for the rest of time whether you order one today you order one next week you order one next year all of the proceeds for these stickers will always go to his family to help support them uh, as they move forward through this difficult time all right guys but without any further ado let's get into the 10 things that you need to know about this Hogue Deca starting with number one great to unbox and yeah guys i don't talk about packaging that much i do keep my knives in their packages but uh, one of the things i really liked about this knife was just the way it was presented um, i just liked the way that it looked in general but um, the pouch was just super classy just simple but looked good and then another thing that was a really nice touch that nobody else really does is hoag sent a sticker with the knife like look at that you know, and this is actually an older Hogue sticker, <laughs> the one that they sent me actually put up. So, uh, yeah, but they sent a sticker with a knife. How nice is that? Like, everyone should do that. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. Uh, nothing really too fancy with it, but it just was a very good start and a good first impression that led me into the knife. All right, getting into number two. This is an Alan Elishowitz design, and it is more of a mainstream Elishowitz, which I really like. Those of you who have followed the channel for a while know that I'm a big Elishowitz fan. Arguably, my favorite knife design of all time is one of his, the Benchmade Aries. But Elishowitz is known, especially with Hogue and some of his old CRKT stuff, to do some stuff that's outside the box. <laughs> and this design here, it, it is a little bit more like friendly to the masses and, and appealing to the masses, you know, and if you look at the Elishwitz knives that I have, you do have, you know, a number of EDCs that are just agreeable to a lot of people in terms of shape and design, but some of this can just be a little bit too far out there. You know, the furthest I've gone is this, you know, but then if you see a lot of the automatics that he's done with Hogue, they're really not for everybody, and I think this is one of those knives with Hogue, especially with the locking mechanism that they're using as well, that can really draw people in and um, and make it very appealing. Another thing that is really appealing about this knife, moving into number three, is that it's sort of got that Goldilocks size. I've seen a lot of people comparing this to the bug out, and it makes sense. You know, the bug out comparison just for overall size is a pretty good one in that, you know, you take a look at it, yeah pretty similar size. But for me, what I've been looking at, what I've really been comparing it to is the Dash 1 Griptilian series. And the reason for that is that we're talking about the same materials. We're talking about G10 and we're talking about 20 CV steel. So you can see it next to the um, mini Griptilian here that it is just a little bit larger. Definitely going to be smaller than the full size Griptilian. So it does have that in-between kind of size, which for a lot of people, I think will be a good thing. You know, sometimes depending on the day, <laughs> and it might seem blasphemy as a guy who loves his mini grips, but sometimes depending on the day and just how I'm feeling, like I want a knife that's just a little bit larger and having that extra size, we're talking about, you know, a quarter inch of uh of cutting edge but if you look at the overall length we're talking about almost a whole inch with the way that this handle tapers down i mean it definitely feels better in hand and gives you a lot more uh, area for purchase so if you are someone with slightly larger hands don't necessarily want the full size griptilian the same kind of materials um right there in the middle so that's definitely a a, a big a big thing <laughs> Moving on to number four, we have a number of different color and blade variations, and they're all sort of interesting when it comes to this knife. You know, there there is just, I think, a black one with a satin blade or a stonewashed blade, but if you take a look at this pattern on here, it's almost like a camo kind of pattern, and there's a blue and black uh, camo kind of pattern as well, which um, it's different, and I think that is part of the appeal as well, you know, for me. This kind of thing is generally not my style, uh, but I wanted something that was not gonna be like every other knife that I had. And I have a lot of blue, and so this knife, I just thought it looked good. I thought the black blade with this kind of um, 
scale was just really neat. And so, I don't know, it, it gives you something that nothing else in your collection will really have. And then the other thing that they have is a Warncliffe version that has a compound kind of grind. And that grind is actually more reminiscent of some of the other more elaborate, more creative kind of Elishwitz designs. So depending on what type of Elishwitz fan you are, you do have a number of different versions that you can pick uh, for whatever your taste is. So... Uh, so far, <laughs> doing a lot of really, really good things. All right, number five, getting into the G10. Let's talk more about it. Let's talk about these ridges and uh, how comfy they are, but a little bit hot. So one thing that you might not notice just because of the actual pattern is the way that these ridges are set up. And it's pretty interesting that just the, the fact that you have these ridges and maybe maybe I'll have to insert a picture, but these ridges run the whole length of the scale all the way up into about where the pivot is. And you can see those lines, but they sort of blend because of the way that the pattern is on the actual printing. So, or on the G10, it's not printing, but you know what I mean. Um, so it is super comfortable just having it in hand. Lots of points of contact as you have these ridges. It's not sharp. But what I will say is if you are doing something with this knife where you're bearing down quite a bit, there are going to be some hot spots. I mean, when I grip hard, I can feel it. I can feel it just a little bit in there. And if you're breaking down boxes, doing things like that, not going to be a huge issue. Once you get into some of those tougher cuts, and if you're doing those for an extended period of time, you should expect that you will feel that just a little bit of sharpness where these ridges are. That wouldn't bother you on just the day-to-day, -day, but in something uh, more extensive, it could be just a little bit of an issue. You. Getting into number six, screw holes everywhere. <laughs> Take a look at this, guys. There are a lot of screws on this knife. It just seems like the whole scale is like peppered with them, right? And one of the things I like about the screws is that they're all T8. You have T8 all across the board. So um, a lot, at least for me, easier to disassemble and reassemble. Those screws, the larger ones, tend to be better quality and, and harder to strip. So I always like the T8 kind of stuff. Um, the problem with it though is it makes the screws really big and uh, it, it can be a little bit detrimental to the look of the knife. Now that said, I think that the ridges and the actual pattern of the G10 sort of mask that and it makes it not pop out as much, but it's one of those things that when you're thinking about it, like now that I've mentioned it, if you didn't already notice it on the knife, like you're definitely noticing it now. And I want to bring in the mini Griptilian and just show you one of the things that the mini griptilian did really well to combat this if you look at the clip side right of the mini grip you do have all of these screws one two three you have one two three then you have your pocket clip and then you have your body screws but one of them's hidden underneath the clip so it's hidden a little bit but then those screws they screw into the other side and they're hidden so your show side is actually pretty streamlined versus the show side here. That's one of the things that the standard mini grip did pretty well to uh, avoid all that, you know? And it didn't have a, uh, a, a filler tab for the clip either on the other side, so you don't have those extra screws on the mini grip as well. Now the 555-1, you know, having those standoffs, it does have those extra holes, but if you just look at the spacing of them, you know, and just the way that it, it, it looks, it just doesn't seem to be dominated. The landscape of the knife doesn't seem to be dominated as much as it is on the DECA. So aesthetically, it may be a little bit of an issue. I don't know, it's something that for me is is just, it. it's something that I notice, but I think aesthetically there's enough other really good things going on and other attention to detail that I can just like look past that. You know, as far as the detail goes, I do like the way that you have uh, some symmetry with the pivot and the axis bar and the thumb studs. You know, all that stuff is like designed similarly. So there's intentionality there, which uh, is definitely a good thing too. But just something to note that, I mean, it is just sort of a lot when it comes to those screws. Now, staying with the locking mechanism though, number seven, the axis lock uh, versus the Benchmade axis lock. I mean, these are both axis locks. I think the actual name is the Able lock, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't even memorize all the names that every company is calling their axis lock. It is essentially an axis lock probably modified a little bit and uh, they've done their thing to it. 
And a lot of people have asked me, because I have handled a couple other Hogue, uh, like Axis Lock kind of knives, well, which one's better, Hogue or Benchmade, Hogue or Benchmade? And it's not really possible to answer that question, guys. I mean, if you look at Benchmade's catalog and Benchmade's lineup on their own, there is variation in the quality of their locking mechanism throughout different models. It just is true. You know, some of the models have uh, Axis Locks that are really, like, snappy. Some of them are a little bit stiffer. It just depends on which one that you get. What I can tell you is that the Hogue ones, every single one of them, has had excellent lockup, and it has been pretty darn easy to actuate. So, I mean, they've executed it well. Is this better than a Benchmade? Um, no, it's not better than a Benchmade, but am I going to say that the Benchmade one is better than this? No, absolutely not. It's comparable. It's the same locking mechanism. It works well. It locks up just fine. No movement up or down. You know, really easy. Seems solid, strong, so... Yeah, no issues. Can't say it's better than Benchmade, but I mean, it's right there on par. All right, and getting in to number eight, Fidget Factor 10 out of 10. And that for me is always a huge one, guys. You know I like knives that are drop shutty and fun to play with. Anything with an access lock is gonna be fun to fidget with. And this knife just really, let me see if I can pick this up. Drop shut really well, so. I dig that aspect of it. Um, it is pretty darn smooth, not much friction. You can see we are running on the phosphor bronze washers, just like a Benchmade would be. Yep, they killed it. And I love that you don't have to uh, sacrifice any lockup in order to get that level of uh, dropping capability. Like it just does it straight out of the box. So that is pretty awesome. Getting into number nine. Value versus the 555-1. Value overall, but really versus the 555 or the 550-1. Um, well, geez. <laughs> There's a lot when it comes to, to these two knives, comparing them and talking about them. Like, there are a lot of similar materials here. And when I look at the price points with this DECA coming in at $148 and the mini grip coming in at $174, I think it is. And like the full size grip in this version is a little bit more. I mean, those are current prices, $25 extra dollars. I don't, I don't know. I don't really see why you wouldn't want to go for something like this unless you're very specifically looking for the, the mini griptilian. I'm not going to say one knife is better than the other, but I think that if you're trying to make an impact on the marketplace and, you know, make a splash, this is where the comparison is. And I think that every material and every way that this knife is built up compares pretty favorably with the mini griptilian or the griptilian line of this uh, Dash 1 version. And then the price is just a, a benefit on top of that, that you're saving a few bucks. So, I mean, you got jimping on this that is pretty darn good. Uh, the value, I think, is really there. The packaging, everything about this just makes me feel like you're getting a, a very good quality knife at a price that is um, not just competitive, but I think superior to a lot of the things on the marketplace. Again, like I always say, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And I mean, I'm not gonna for a second tell you that this design is favorable to me over a mini griptilian because the mini griptilian is my bread and butter. But if you're looking for something different or you're just looking to get these materials at a, uh, at a good price in a package that is well built and executed, this is definitely a good one. So that slides us right into number 10, overall recommendation. Guys, this knife is one that I knew I was going to love. I knew it was going to be a home run for me just because uh, all I was banking on was like, like Hogue just had to make it right. With a design like this and the look of the knife, the aesthetics, the axis lock, the price point, the materials, everything about it just lined up for it to be a knife that I really loved. And I almost, I almost made a little caveat at the beginning of my at the beginning of my top 10 knives for 2019 saying that it's really hard to take any of this seriously because I didn't get a Hogue Deca this year. You know, and, and I almost said that and I held back on it. And I've got to tell you guys now that this knife would have been right up there at the top of my favorite knives for 2019. Not saying it was going to be number no, number one, but it really is excellent and a wonderful, wonderful option that Hogue is putting out there. And this with the other uh, Axis Lock knives that they have, they're really um, making a name for themselves in the market with manual knives that are really good options and alternatives if you don't have a model from the Benchmade lineup that you're into. 
All right, guys, so that's what I've got. Any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know down below. Again, uh, everyone who's been involved um, in donating to the charity raffle or picking up stickers, I really appreciate you guys. And also, check out Zach, Zach Stuff, link again down below. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care and have a good one.